Hello, students. This is Pastor Greenman, and it is almost Christmas. This is the fourth week of Advent, which means we are lighting the candle of peace this week and exploring what it means for Jesus to be our Prince of Peace. So, before we get into the lesson, let's briefly review where we have already been this Advent season. First, we lit the candle of hope and celebrated the hope or expectation we have in Jesus that He is God's goodness to us and He will fulfill every promise. Second, we lit the candle of love and celebrated the unconditional love God has shown us at Christmas time in sending his one and only son to us that we might be saved. And last week, we lit the candle of joy. And Pastor Larice taught us that Jesus brought joy to the world. Happiness is temporary, but she told us that joy is based on the things that don't come and go. Wow. The gifts of Jesus are forever. And one of those gifts is salvation. And our memory verse from last week focused on that gift. So let's review it together. You you should know it. Your memory verse from last week was from Hebrews 8, verse 12. And in the English Standard Version, it is, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. All right. So now that we've reviewed, let's go on to the candle of peace. And this week's passage is from Isaiah chapter 9 starting at verse 2. So we'll read Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7 in the English Standard Version. And it reads as such, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. All right. So this passage from Isaiah is often read during Advent as it is a prophetic declaration of the coming Messiah, that he would be a child born and a son given to us to break the rod of our oppressor, the devil, and establish a kingdom of peace, justice, and righteousness. We know that this child who was born to us is Jesus, a gift to all of us to bring or to usher in this wonderful, magnificent vision of a kingdom unlike any other before. And there is a lot packed into these verses that we could discuss here. But this week, we are going to very specifically focus in on the declaration of Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Now, you might wonder, I thought Jesus was a king. So why are we talking about him being a prince? Well, let's explore that word a little bit. So a prince is a title of nobility, specifically the title given to the son of a sovereign ruler. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a prince to be a monarch or a ruler of a principality or a state. So a prince likely ruled and governed under a king or queen in preparation for becoming the next king at the proper time and in due season. So giving the title of prince to Jesus is in no way making him less or not a king. In fact, it powerfully highlights the authority he has as the son of God. Jesus was born into nothing, born into poverty in a barn to young parents who weren't privileged enough to be given a room. But although he was born with nothing from an earthly perspective, he came with a divine mandate as the son of God to prepare our deliverance and our salvation, something we could not do ourselves. He walked the earth for 33 years, doing all that the father showed him to do, preparing for his moment. And when it came, he embraced the cross and death for our sake. Now he has risen. And now to all who embrace him as prince, he offers peace. 
Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. He rules over and administers our peace, and he is the only way to peace with God the Father. So when speaking of Jesus as the Prince of Peace, we need to understand two things. First, we must understand that Jesus made peace through the cross. Paul writes in Ephesians 2 that Jesus himself is our peace, that he broke down the dividing wall of a hostility or conflict between us and God because of our sin. And he made that peace by reconciling us to God through his sacrifice on the cross, through his blood and his sacrifice. So by taking our sins upon himself, he paid our debt. And to all who believe and confess him as Lord and Savior, he has the authority as prince to offer peace with God. But it doesn't stop there. The second thing we must know about Jesus being the Prince of Peace is that he also gives peace in this life. He is now the ruler of a kingdom called peace. And there are benefits to belonging or having citizenship in that kingdom. So let's look at some of those. So Isaiah 26, verse 3, Isaiah writes, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And in Philippians 4, verse 7, Paul writes, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, peace in the Old Testament is the word shalom, a Hebrew word that means more than just absence of conflict. It refers to wholeness, well-being, and completeness. So Jesus first removes the conflict between us and God through the forgiveness of our sins. And then he offers us the opportunity to receive his peace in this life right now, to live lives that are whole and complete in him. Wow, this is what it means to celebrate peace at Christmas. Jesus was born to make peace through the cross and give peace to all who will receive it. If you haven't yet asked Jesus for peace this Christmas, I'm gonna encourage you today to add this to your wish list. Right there at the top, insert the word peace. You know, before all those toys and goodies, Ask Jesus for peace. Uh, For the adults who are listening, before those clothes, those shoes, those tools, those toys, those cars, that licorice or candy or whatever it is, you should ask Jesus for peace. And I believe he will not disappoint. Because you see, before we end, I want to pause and highlight a theme across our Advent lessons that we shouldn't miss this year. The lesson is this. Jesus is at a whole nother level in his gift giving. In John 14, Jesus himself told his disciples that he doesn't give like the world gives. So you may have someone in your family who's a really good gift giver, right? Some people are just really thoughtful and really come up with creative, awesome gifts. And Jesus is saying in John 14, no matter how good of a gift giver you are, I got it at a whole nother level. You can't even touch how I give gifts. And we've seen this all throughout our Advent lessons. So I don't want us to miss this as we come up to Christmas. Let's go back and look at it. First lesson about hope. The world's hope is wishful thinking, but the hope Jesus gives is certainty that he will fulfill every promise and that it will be good. Second lesson on love. The world's love is fickle and selfish at times, but the love that Jesus gives is unconditional and sacrificial. In fact, while we were yet sinners and couldn't offer him anything, he loved us and died for us. Third lesson. Joy. The world's happiness is temporary and based on things that end and go away. But the joy Jesus gives is forever and is focused on eternal things, not on those things that come and go. And now we have peace. Jesus has the authority to give a peace that no power of earth or hell can take from us because he is its prince. So as we close out today, I want to review our memory verse for this week from Isaiah, that we should all commit to memory to remind us at Christmas time who our Savior is to us. The memory verse is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6b, so part b, and it reads, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, I'm going to read it one more time. Isaiah 9, 6b, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I encourage you this Christmas season to commit that verse to memory and to ask 
our Heavenly Father, in the name of his Son, Jesus, our Prince, for that peace that passes all understanding, that peace that will guard your hearts and minds. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you in the name of your Son, Jesus, for that peace, that peace that only you can bring. We thank you first for saving us and reconciling us to yourself that we might have peace with God. And we thank you secondly for giving us in this life a peace that passes all understanding. So we pray at Christmas time that we would have that peace, that you would fill us to overflowing with your peace, your joy, your love, and your hope. For you are the light of our salvation, and we give you glory. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.